I've looked over a lot of beginner models in SketchUp, and these same five problems keep showing up over and over again. If you're making any of these mistakes, you're not alone, but you could be saving yourself a lot of time by doing them a little bit differently. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so mistake number one that I see all the time is not modeling on axis. They can, this can create a ton of different problems, and it's usually created by new users not knowing that they can actually inference to different directions. So say, for example, that you were just trying to draw a flat plane like this one, and you just had a little bit of a mistake, right? Like a little bit of an up right here, and you kind of drew in this direction. And so it looks like you're drawing square, but you're actually not. And so if you drew that one line, not square, notice how you're not going to be able to close in your faces and nothing is going to work the way that you want it to work. And so what you end up having to do is you end up having to do this thing where you start coming in here and filling in faces and trying to figure out what you've messed up and all of that. And it's just not really fun at all. It can also lead to issues like this one where you have things like walls that just are a little bit off. Um, not a lot, but a little bit. And so when you push pull, things aren't aligned anymore. And so you end up having really crooked walls. You end up having roofs that aren't necessarily aligned, things like that. Now, how do you fix this? You use inference locking. So the way this works is when you activate a tool, you just need to make sure that you either hold the shift key when you're drawing in a direction. So notice if I hold shift right here, it's going to lock me to this red direction. Or tools also have keyboard inference locking. What that means is say you activate the line tool right here, tap the right arrow key. Now you're locked to that direction so that you know that you're drawing on the actual axis itself. And when you know that you're drawing on the axis itself, then you know that your faces are going to fill, everything's gonna be straight up and down and you're not gonna have problems anymore. So use that inference locking when you're drawing in SketchUp. And by the way, I do have a mini course that helps you practice these different things. It helps you learn by modeling. So this is my beginner modeling workout pack. It's basically a collection of five different projects that you can follow along with me and model that are going to teach you all of the different concepts that you're going to need to get confident modeling in SketchUp. So from learning your basic modeling tools all the way through the right way to make copies, the way to cut holes and openings, and then we're going to cap it off with a complete project where you're going to create a three-dimensional model as well as two-dimensional plans from that model in layout. So if you're someone that wants to follow along and learn by modeling, definitely check this out. You can check it out at the sketchupessentials.com slash beginner modeling. Oh, and by the way, it's on sale for 30% off through the end of the week. And so mistake number two is one you've probably seen before. If you've ever seen a model that looks like this, where it's just a whole bunch of raw geometry put together, you know it can be painful to try to make changes, right? All your geometry sticks together and you've just got this issue where making changes and adjustments really hard. So say that you've got a window and a wall like this one, it can be really hard to move that around because it's almost impossible to just select the geometry that you want in order to make those changes. So how do you fix this? You group as you go. So basically what this means is your models should look more like this with everything neatly organized and grouped, which means that your geometry isn't going to merge together. So in this situation, say that I've got a wall like this one and I want to make a change. I can just adjust where the opening is inside of the wall by picking up that raw geometry. Then I can go into my windows group and I can just move that window into the opening itself. Everything's kind of separated like this so that I don't have to deal with a whole bunch of geometry moving around and sticking together. And so how does that work? Before you go to 3D, group your geometry, select it, group it, then extrude it. What that does is that puts your geometry already in a group like this. So now I've got my geometry grouped like this, but when I click out of it, notice how no longer am I going to have to deal with that geometry merging. So say I had window openings like these. Well, now when I come in here and I start adding my windows, so whatever those end up looking like, like this, notice how that geometry is actually separate from the geometry that's in the group. So what that means, that means that now I've got geometry where I don't have to deal with all of that merging and making changes and making edits is really easy. Not grouping as you go can lead to a ton of problems. Issue number three 
is no organization. The problem with no organization in a model is it means it's very difficult to isolate things to work on them. So say you needed to make a change to this wall behind all of your cabinets or say that you needed to um, just take a look at your doors or something like that. So in a model like this one, we just don't really have the organization set up where I can isolate those different things. There's a whole bunch of different uh, tags and things like that, but they're really hard to actually deal with. And so on the other hand, if we group like objects like this, so if you've got your doors and windows in a group, your shelves in a group, all of your different parts and pieces in a group like this, and you can actually see those by going into my outliner. So I use the outliner to stay organized. I've actually named those different things. But in addition to naming those different things, I also have tags set up so I can toggle off things like my appliances, like my furniture and fixtures, um, like my light fixtures and things like that. So if I need to get to just like a singular piece inside of my model, that's really easy to get to. So I've got all my entourage set so that I can toggle it on and off like this. So by organizing your model, what it does is it gives you the ability not only to get in and edit different things, but also to set up different views and stack viewports on top of each other inside of layout. So by organizing your model and making sure that you're able to toggle everything on and off whenever you want to, it gives you the ability to actually get in and edit without like frantically clicking on a whole bunch of different things inside of your model. Um, the other plus to this is you can actually toggle, you can actually toggle everything off in your model and you can see if you have any stray geometry inside of that model. So everything should be grouped so that you don't have any stray geometry at all. Notice how this gives me the ability to get in here and see anything that I want and change anything that I want at any time. So model organization is huge and it's something I see a lot of beginners not doing. All right, so issue number four is I see a lot of beginners not using keyboard shortcuts. And the problem with not using keyboard shortcuts is it really takes a whole lot of additional time in order to activate tools. So say, for example, that I've got a model in here that I'm trying to generate and I come over here and I click on the icon of the tool in order to try to activate it. So say that I push pull something like this, I would come over here and I would click on that. But now I have to come back over here and activate the line tool like this in order to draw a line so that I can draw at the front of my model. So if I'm moving my mouse over and back every time I need to do something, it's just ridiculously slow. And so what should be happening instead is beginners should be learning to use keyboard shortcuts. And so what keyboard shortcuts are is they're shortcuts on your keyboard that allow you to quickly activate different tools. So like the L key activates the line tool, the R key activates the rectangle tool. And so when we do that, what that does is that makes modeling inside of SketchUp significantly faster because you can see that I can actually just tap the keys on the keyboard in order to activate those different tools. So E key for the eraser tool, for example, P key for the push pull tool. And notice how quickly I can activate the different tools and work with those inside of my SketchUp model um, without me having to go through and like find icons and things like that. So notice how I'm just able to toggle very, very quickly between those different keyboard shortcuts just by tapping the keys on my keyboard. And so if you are looking for a good guide to keyboard shortcuts in SketchUp, I will link to my keyboard shortcuts guide um, in the notes down below this video and on this page so that you can go download that as a reference for what that might look like getting started. But highly, highly recommend you start using keyboard shortcuts even if you are a total beginner because learning them early will save you a ton of time. And so the last mistake I see a lot of beginners still making is they're trying to make copies by doing a copy paste. So say I wanted to create a copy of this chair, I could do a control C and a control V, but the problem is I don't really have a whole lot of control over where this goes inside of my 3D model, right? Like I can click in here, but it doesn't really give me the ability to set spacing or anything like that. And then I have to go back and I have to start spacing out different things. I have to make sure the spacing is right. And then if I'm doing this again, then I have to do it all over again, right? So there's a couple faster ways to do this. So the first way is actually to use the flip tool. This is great for symmetrical things. So for example, I'm going to want to put a chair at the end of this table as well. So I can activate the flip tool. I can click and drag this green axis and I can tap the control key 
What that'll do is that actually puts the flip tool in copy mode. So if you ever need to flip objects across symmetrical surfaces, you can just use the flip tool in copy mode in order to do that. So in addition, you can also use the move tool in array mode. So say that I was to create another copy right here like this, but now I want to copy these place settings and chairs all the way across. So the way I can do that is select all of these, tap the M key. And so we're going to single click to set a base point and then we'll click again to place an object. However, you can also, with the move tool active, so once I can click on this point, I can tap the control key in order to create a copy. That allows me to do things like typing in a distance, like this, but I can also use the move tool in copy mode to create arrays, either by multiplication, so I could set a base point, and then type in star three and hit the enter key, or by division, right here. So if I tap M, single click, move my mouse, tap control, and I set this base point. If I type in a forward slash and then a three and I hit the enter key, it allows me to create a number of copies like this. So using the flip tool and move tools in order to create copies, make creating copies in your models substantially faster. All right, so that's where I'm going to end this video. If you do want to practice these and really kind of like dial them in, you should definitely check out that beginner SketchUp workout pack. That's only going to be available through the end of the week. It's usually only available as a bonus um, purchase when people are purchasing my main course. But um, through the end of the week, you can actually get that separately if you do want some great exercises to practice with that. If you do have any questions about anything we talked about in this video, feel free to leave them in the comments down below, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.